Hello, and in today's video, we're gonna have a deep dive into QuickBooks and particularly into categories. Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer and also a UK Retailer. Today's video is about that one particular issue we've all had. Let's have a look. Okay, so I know how to post this one. All uh, right, well, this one posts here. This is telephone. This is tele... Uh, 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 uh. What do I post this one to? We've all been there. We've all had that problem where we don't know where to post something in QuickBooks themselves. Normally what happens is a particular transaction will turn up that you just don't understand whereabouts it's gonna be posted to. And that's what this video is all about. We're gonna try and understand exactly what categories are in the first place, and then we're gonna figure out what sort of categories are for what sort of transactions. So let's take a look. Okay, so if we are looking at categories, let's figure out first of all what they actually mean and whereabouts they're found within QuickBooks. On the left-hand side, you've got the accounting section and you have an area called chart of account. Now, chart of account is effectively all the different categories that you can have within QuickBooks. And when you go in there the first place, it's going to be quite overwhelming because there's going to be quite a lot of transactions that are going to appear there. As we scroll down here though, you'll notice that one of the ones that are interested for you is this type bot column here. And the ones that I would be first and foremost concerned about is income expenses because they're the easiest ones to get your head around. Now, when you first set up QuickBooks, it's going to create a lot of these transactions for you. A lot of these categories are already going to be built directly within QuickBooks. And if you need to make any amendments to any of these, then on the right hand side of every category there is an option to drop down the arrow when you go to edit it's going to bring up a box very similar to this one and this gives you the opportunity to go through and change them now if you create a new category or edit a new category you're shown the exact same page so let's have a look at what these bot buttons do. The first one is account type. Now this is effectively whereabouts in your financial statements are gonna go. You don't need to worry too much about most of these categories. The ones I would concentrate on is income, potentially other income, cost of sales if that's applicable, and expenses. The rest of these up here, very rarely will you need to interact with. And really what your accountants and maybe business advisors will look at for you. The only one you may want to consider is cash at bank and in hand. And the only reason that's useful is if you need to put a new cash account in or a new personal account or something along those lines. The items I talked about though, income, other income. So it's going to be majority of your money into QuickBooks, you will class as income. So any sales you make, any services you do for another client, everything you want to be flowing into that income category. Other income as an account type, that's where you want to put everything else. So if there's any one-off income, maybe grants from HMRC or anything along those lines, then you want to be putting that in the other income column. Cost of sales are items that you are buying in that you're then directly going to sell. And the best thing to consider about the difference between what is a cost of sale and what is an expense is if you think about it in terms of, well, if I buy or sell a hundred of these items, then that's going to affect my cost of sales. So if I sell a hundred of them, that means I'm going to buy a hundred of the items in first of all, to then go and sell them. So your cost of sales should directly reflect your income like for like. So if you sold a hundred of something, you'll have a cost of sales of it. If you sold 200 of them, you expect to see two times in the cost of sales. You should see that any transaction you put into cost of sales should grow with the amount of sales that you grow. Whereas expenses, we would commonly refer to these as admin expenses or overhead. And effectively, they have no bearing on how much you sell. Majority of the time, if you sell one item or 6,000 items, your overheads will be about similar. There are cases where you grow your business and you're gonna try and build that up bigger, but majority of the time, that's what's related. So to clarify, income for any, any income that you receive in, other income for any one-off income or anything that's outside what you normally sell, cost of sales if it's something that relates directly to something that you are selling, so buying of goods or employing someone who is you're selling that, their services on, and expenses for all your overheads that go in. Once you've done that, that's gonna give you a really good indication of what it is to expect from account type, those four categories. The next part though is detail type. And don't worry too much about detail type. All you need to do as your business is try and fit it to the best you possibly can. If I'm creating a brand new category now, all I care about is nailing that account type, so making sure I get it right between income and expense, 
And then from a detail type, I'm just gonna pigeonhole to the best of my ability. So I'm gonna pick any of these that work for me. Once you've picked that, you need to choose a name. Now, one of the things about QuickBooks is the name has to be unique. So you need to be thinking of a category that is unique in QuickBooks. And if you try and put a category in there that's already been used, you're gonna get an error message telling you that it's already been utilized. But don't get too drawn up about it. The most important person who's going to see this information is yourself. So think about what's gonna benefit me. If I look into my profit and loss in two months time, am I gonna benefit from seeing a breakdown of all these different types of expenses? You can put as many expenses in as you need, but it's all about what's gonna benefit you. If you need to break down between post and stationary, what is post and what is stationary, then have two different categories. No one's going to say that that's wrong. If that makes your business more efficient and means that you can make decisions based on that information, then that's the most important thing. So pick a name. Doesn't matter what the name is, but something that's gonna to relate to what that expenditure is. Description's there for you to think about a description if you need to. Is subaccount gives you the opportunity to create this transaction to be a subaccount of another category. So think about it in terms of telephone. You may wanna have your telephone expense but you might want to split it between mobile, landline, and so on. Sub account gives you the opportunity to create a sub account within mobile or within telephone. And then you can even go one step further. So within your mobile, you might need to split between what's data and what's calls. And you can have that again and again and again. So all you need to do is when you create the account for the first time, you click on is sub account and you choose what the parent account is going to be. Then going forward, that account will sit underneath the other account, meaning that if you run a report, you can see the total of the account and then you can drill down into the details if you need to. And then finally, VAT code. If you are VAT registered, this is where you're going to put your default VAT position to. So that every time that you select that account or category, it's then going to prompt you to use that VAT code going forward. Really useful if you have really complex VAT issues and it means that you can streamline that process so that you're always applying the correct VAT code to each category. Now that I'm comfortable in creating my own category, let's look at what categories you would use for certain items. Now, the most times that this is gonna come up is in that banking section. So within banking, notice that the category or match is this area here. A majority of the time, you're gonna have these nice green elements here. Basically, QuickBooks is going to be giving you some indication of what that category or that transaction should be. But remember, my golden rule for doing the bank account. When you click add or match or anything within QuickBooks, you are basically saying you're happy with the category or transaction or VAT, you're happy that that transaction is correct. So that's important. If QuickBooks has given you the opportunity to try and pick it for you or given you a prompt or try to put you in the right direction, it's still up to you as the user of the software to say that I'm happy that it's been put to the right place. As an example, at this moment, this Shell transaction, so I've gone down to put some fuel in my car, is being put to motor running expenses. And I'm happy with that. So I to review it, I click into it, make sure I'm happy with it. In this case, I do need to also apply a VAT code. And then at that point, I press add. When I'm pressing add, I'm saying I'm happy that that's been put to the right place. Other ones though, like this BP one here, QuickBooks has also seen another me going to a car place and trying to fill up my car. But in this case, I'm actually not wanting that to go to motor running expenses. And again, it's up to me. I need to review the transaction before I press add. Me pressing add, is me saying I'm happy that this category is right. In this case, maybe I've gone to BP and I've not actually bought some motor stuff, but I've actually bought some personal items and I don't want it to go against motor expenses because I know it's for personal use. Well, in this case, I start typing the word director's loan or drawings, depending on what type of business you've got. And I'd already created, and I've got another video for this, I've created a director's loan slash drawings account which is effectively all my personal life. So I click on that. I'm now not claiming any VAT. Now it's moved to director's loan. I press add. So when I go to choose what category, I should be thinking about, well, what does this transaction mean to me? The next one here has uncategorized expense relating to it. Well, in that case, QuickBooks doesn't know what this transaction is and I have to go and pick. Well, I've seen this fact it says Tesco fuel. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to be fair, 
that's definitely going to be motor running costs. So I start typing in motor, and as you can see, motor running expenses appear. Now, because I'm now teaching QuickBooks for the first time, when I select motor running expenses, down the bottom here, QuickBooks is now learning that. And it says that we'll set Tesco fuel to motor run expense from now on. So now QuickBooks knows what to do with that transaction going forward. And I can add that one. Now, remember from those other videos, rules are basically going to say that that's going to be a transaction that it wants to put it there. We've set a rule so that when it sees that transaction, it knows what to do. But again, when you press that add button, it's your responsibility to make sure that's there. And in all of these cases, I'm probably going to override that rule and I'm wanting to put it to somewhere else. So PC world, I've got in there and I've bought something. Now I've bought something that I want to be keeping tabs on. I don't want it just to go to printing posters and stationery. I want it to go to a place where I can see how much money I've spent on it for my own personal. So if it's a brand new transaction or a brand new category, all I do is start typing the name. So I'm gonna do computer upgrade. So in my mind, for my business, I'm having to invest heavily in computer equipment. I need to keep an eye on that expenditure. So there's nothing wrong with me creating a brand new category that keeps that in there for me so I can understand how much I'm spending on it. Again, the most important person who's gonna see this information is you. If it makes sense for you to be recording that category, then there's no reason to create a brand new category to let you see that. So here, because I've got a brand new category, computer upgrade costs, I get to add that directly from this page and it's bringing up that same screen we've just looked at. So here, my expense is correct. My account type is set to expense. So I'm happy with that because this is gonna be a general overhead cost. But my detail type, I'm just gonna shoehorn that into something that makes sense. So here I've got office general administration expenses. To be fair, I think that sort of sounds about right to me. Well, another option I could look at is repair and maintenance. It doesn't matter which one of these I choose, as long as I'm choosing something that seems about right. So never get too hook up on this, this detail type. I'm then gonna say every time I incur this, I want 20% VAT, but I want this to be a sub account of computer expenses or computer running costs. I still want it to be included in my computer running costs, but I wanna split it down so I can see if there's anything there that's worthwhile, if I'm spending too much, or maybe I wanna think about maybe capitalizing this transaction in the future, save and close. So now I'm telling QuickBooks not to post it against the rule, but now to post it against computer running costs and in my opinion, computer upgrade costs. Let's add that transaction. This next PC world, maybe that's the same one because I've already set this up once, it's then gonna be there for me again. So I do computer and then you'll see upgrade costs is now a sub account of running costs. So I'll select upgrade costs. And finally, this transaction here, well, I've gone to PC world, but I've not actually bought anything to upgrade. I've bought additional hardware. So in this case, again, the rule is trying to post it against printing, posting and stationery which normally I would be happy with. But in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna put that to computer, start typing it in. And when I put it to computer, I even get all these computer equipment transactions. Now for your peace of mind, the one you're gonna be using most of all is computer equipment additions at cost. That's basically saying that this isn't a general expense, this is a capital item. And as a capital item, I want to include it there. Now, these are normally the sort of transactions your accountant will be able to find for you and look for you and put into the right place. But to help your accountant along, feel free to use any of these extra, more complicated categories for them to be able to see that you've purchased something in the year. So in this case, I'm gonna say computer equipment additions at cost. If you had put that into computer running costs, it's not the end of the world, or even the upgrade one. But for this one, I'm gonna make it nice and easy for my accountant and I'm gonna press add. Now, what about if I need to split a transaction between two different categories? Well, I jump into the category, into the transaction, and down in the bottom right-hand side, I get the option to split. When I press the button split, I get shown this page, and I'll, I get to split how I need it to be. So maybe I'm saying that the first 100 pound of this is to my personal account, so director's loan, and then the rest of it was for motor running costs. And then I can put 259 pound 97. That's now going to split that transaction between a hundred pound that's for personal use and then the 259 pound 97 I'm gonna record as a business transaction, save and add. Coming up now with categories for telephone. I'm happy with that, I'm confident with that. So I can add, 
and I can add one more time. Remember, when you add two transactions coming in of the same mod, it's gonna prompt you for suggest a rule. If you've just gone and created a brand new category and you've put that transaction in twice, I would really consider using this create a rule. Therefore, next time it sees, in my case, British Telephone Group, it's then gonna put it against telephone for me. So let's create a rule on that. The next thing to look at is local city council. So now I'm starting to get really complex transactions. And in this case, this was actually me receiving a grant for, for COVID-19. Now I've got a category here for grants, but let me, let's me let make one so it's purely just for COVID-19. So I've got COVID-19 grants. I'm gonna use the other income and put it there and then add. The only other time where you might have a bit of an issue in terms of categories is when you move in one money to another. Now in this case, I would always use that cash at bank in hand transaction. So here I've got my bounce back loan and a category I've just created called NatWest bounce back loan. You'll notice all I've done is called it a cash and at bank and in hand to make it nice and straightforward. When I add that transaction, it's then going to move it directly to that new cash at bank. Now the reason categories are important is about looking back. So if I go to my reports now and get comfortable with using reports, reports are gonna be really useful for you understanding what's happening within your business. When I go to reports though, my favorite report is profit and loss by month, which is normally found within the business overview just here. So profit and loss by month, which I favorited by using my little star, means that I can look at all dates, run report. And what I like about this report is it gives me so much data and it's telling me maybe I've made a mistake, maybe I've missed something, maybe I should consider looking at something else because it's telling me that all my director's salaries have been posted correctly. So that's good news for me. It's telling me that my gross wages though only started in March. Is there anything else I need to be looking at bringing there in? And now, thanks to me having a look at the computer equipment in a different way, I now have broken down my computer running costs against my computer upgrade costs. And I can now see either the total computer running costs by closing this little button here, £72.21, or I can split it down into its separate categories. And then I can see that I've got 7221. I may want to do the same with the telephone costs here because at the moment it's not really telling me anything. Maybe future, I want to be saying what's mobile versus what's landline. Sometimes when you do reports like this, it highlights to you that you may have made a mistake. So for hit example here, I've got wages expense, 12,000, 12,000. But here I've got gross wages, 3,000, 3,000. On this report though, I can fix that directly here. All I do is I go into the transaction, is find the transaction that's been changing, and I can then go to gross wages and save and close. So I find that other mistake, click into it. Now reviewing that and having a look at my categories means I've now put them into the right category. 3,000, 4,200, 4,200, 3,000. So I've now got it in the right place. I don't have anything for that other wages one. Also here, when it comes to income, majority or category will just go directly to sales. But if you want to split that into multiple categories, this is the benefit you'd have from doing that. So here, because I've split all my different sales categories into different ones, I can now see which one's making me money, which one I should start double downing on, or which one's not really worthwhile to me as a product cycle. The reason we use other income down the bottom is because it takes all of that extra income you may have received that doesn't relate to your standard sales and puts it into its own item at the bottom so that it's completely away from your kind of your day-to-day -day running. And that's it, that's a breakdown and look into categories and why they're important. Some of the things to look out for are gonna be expenditure and your typical categories. I'll put a list here of all the different categories that we use in Boffix. So you can stop, pause, and refer to this at any point when you need to. And that's it. That's all there is need to know about categories. You'll notice it's quite a complex area, but it's all about yourself. It's all about getting the information that you need, that you run. This report here, profit and loss by month, I am the one who really cares about that properly. I want to make sure that it's giving me information that's going to help me make good decisions about my business. So don't get too hung up in creating new categories and creating them. As long as you keep to those four ones of income, other income, cost of sales and expenses, they're going to appear in the right area 
within your profit and loss. If you do have any questions on this though, don't forget to head over to Boffix. There, the guys will be able to give you some advice, let you know what's going on, and also be able to help you, or maybe even be able to do some cleanup for you in your QuickBooks license. With that, that's it for today. Hopefully you have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. I say yeah, 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 yeah. I told him I can be a fighter if you want. I'll be there to catch you if you fall. I can make it brighter when it starts, when it starts. I told him I would do it all for you. And I know you do it for me too. I can be a fighter if you want, if you want. I can be a fighter. I can be a fighter. That it's real, cause I can get him out of my head. I don't care what we do, everything's really new. Even if we're staying bad, I ought to say, yeah, yeah.